والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله آل الله لا سيما بقية الله ولعنة الله على آذاه من عاد الله من يوم هذا إلى لقاء الله أما بعد فقد قال الله في كتاب حكيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أقيم الصلاة أقيم الصلاة لدلوك الشمس إلى الغسق الليل والقرآن فجر إن قرآن فجر كان مشهودا اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد We are picking up some verses of Surah Bani Israel and this is such a beautiful verse of about Salah that's why I picked it that Allah described in such a beautiful and a simple sentence the timing of Salat and the way he described it when to do Salat now I will read the translation keep a prayer from the declining of the sun till the darkness of the night in morning recitation show me the morning recitation is witnessed so Allah gave two times when to do Salat and the third time so what are the two times declining of the sun the salat starts what is declining of the sun the whole time that's the first time you start salat in this verse so Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says to the sadhan salvat lauma salala muhammad wa alayhi muhammad two salats are in the declining of the sun what are those the whole and asal right when sun declines from the midday and start declining, right? Where is the sun on the top? And the midday, right? The wild time. And then starts declining, right? Towards sunset. And then, so that is the time of Vohar. And after Vohar is Asar. So these two are the time for declining of the sun. And then these are two Salah. Then Allah said, till the darkness of the night. What is the darkness of the night? Midnight. So there are two at the decline of the sun and two salat are after the sunset what are those two salat of sunset maghrib and isha as soon as sunset start ghasakil layl ghasakil layl so sunset you start the maghrib and you do isha till midnight after midnight no isha now what about the mornings salat right that's left right now what Allah says about it is so beautiful you will love it in the morning recitation morning recitation in the Quran of Fajr Kana Mashuda surely the morning recitation is witnessed Allah says about reading Quran do we read Quran in Salat Fajr yes Surah Han right Surah Qulullah right we do recite Quran right so Allah used such a beautiful way of expressing himself he expressed beautifully you know to give special importance to the Salat Fajr he says and what he says about Salat Fajr show me the morning recitation is witnessed somebody is witnessing it when we wake up we get up in the morning and do Salat Fajr somebody witness it who witness it see before there were only two to look at Salat when Prophet started Salat there were only two rakat for each we do five times Salat right everyone was two rakat but afterward Prophet added more rakat for things right but the morning Salat always stayed two rakats why two rakats because this is a time when you stand up and do Salat the more night angels go to the heaven and the more night angels who are watching us writing our deeds they go to heaven and the morning angels come to us that time so there is a shift change of angels so in one rakat you have the night angels being with you and in the second rakat the morning angels come to heaven and start writing your deeds so this salat is witnessed by two groups of the angels so Allah says surely the morning recitation is witnessed they are witness so important so can you imagine how important the morning salat is Allah says 
that is reading Quran and being witnessed by two shift of angels and Allah says himself I witness this Salat when you do Salat of morning I witnesses so can you imagine somebody missing the morning Salat how big is the sin you know not to do morning Salat people say oh you know we'll be in up to 12 o'clock and then they don't get up at morning Salat is it acceptable no it's not acceptable if you think that uh, nothing can compromise for morning Salat nothing can compromise you have to discipline yourself, sleep in time, if shaitan makes, because it is wajib to do morning salah. Many people do that, oh I was in my center at 2 o'clock. What are you doing? I was just talking and gossiping, right? And now you went home and you did not wake up for morning salah. What happened? Shaitan tricked us. Putting us in gossips and partying and hugging long time here and then going late because it is, a, it is weekend night and you are here up to late and a Sunday morning you miss your morning salat because you were up to 2 o'clock here please Hassan and Salawat Allahumma Sallallahu Muhammad Wa Ala Muhammad now next verse is about Tahajjud very important verse wa mina layli fa tahajjud bihi nafalatan laka asa an yarasaka rabbukka maqamam mahmooda and during a part of night Pray tahajjud for it beyond what is incumbent on you. Maybe your Lord will raise you to a praise station. Are you paying attention, boys? So Allah says, He talked about already five times prayer now. He is talking about tahajjud prayer now. See how beautiful verses are coming about tahajjud, mashallah. Huh? During the night, part of the night, pray tahajjud. Tahajjud, word came from waking up. Tahajjud came from waking up. For beyond what is incumbent on you, it is nafila. Allah says nafila. What is meaning of nafila? This is not mandatory on you. It is afnal. But for Prophet, it was mandatory. But for us, it is afnal. And what Allah says about when you do tahajjud nafila, what will happen? Maybe your Lord will raise you to a praise station. Your station will go so high that you will be praised, you know. This was originally came from Prophet Sallallahu Praise station. You know. And what is praise station? Let me explain you what praise station means. That everybody should praise it. You know, when you are being praised by everybody, it becomes a praise station. Right? That everybody should praise you. When people will praise you? Tell me. People will praise you when you give them some benefit. If you don't give benefit, nobody will praise you. Right? So what is praise station of Prophet? The, so what is the presentation of Prophet is that when judgment day comes, right? And everybody is nervous. Even prophets would be nervous to deal with Allah. Because Allah has Jala. He is He is He has a, a strong position on the judgment day. He is the Malik, you know. So everybody will be scared. Even the Prophet will be afraid to deal with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Adam alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam, Isa alayhi salam. Huh? All these will be kind of nervous to deal with Allah so you know what prophet said that prophet has hadith and prophet said I am the chief of Adam's children and there is no boasting in that he said what beautiful hadith I, I think this is the best hadith from prophet for me right he said I am the chief of Adam's children and there is no boasting about it this is no big deal this is not a shaykh prophet said it so beautiful. That's why we love our prophet so much. That he is the chief of Adam's children. We love him so much. We are blessed to be under his nation, right? So what is his place position is that? That when all the prophets will go to the chief of the Adam's child. Who is the prophet? He said, please go and talk to Allah. We are here struggling. We are nervous. So, in the hadith it says that prophet will go to paradise door and knock. And the voice will come. Who is this? He says, I am Muhammad. Then, he will prostrate. He will go to sajda. And then he will sit. Allah has said, Muhammad, ask me. Ask me. I am ready to forgive. Then he will again go to sajda. Then he will stand up. Then Allah says, ask me about intercession. Then he will start interceding people. One after another. One after another. So much intercession will be done, you know, that 
till the point the Prophet will be very happy about it. So much intercession will come, inshallah. Don't you love it? So everybody will love Prophet that day. So everybody will praise Prophet Salaam for this great position, you know. Because his position will be a praise position. Even believers will get a good position, you know. Even believers will do intercession for other believers who are on higher positions. Those believers will also get a position, you know. So the 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 midnight prayer has a very unique position, you know. There are a lot of narration about midnight prayers, a lot of big things about midnight prayer. I wish we had a time to talk about midnight prayer. But famous thing about midnight prayer is this that when the death angel comes, you know, when death angel comes to take our room, the, this midnight prayer takes a shape and it does intercession for us. It does intercession for us to take our room easy from our body. So it is a intercession itself, the midnight prayer. Then what it does also, when Munkar Nakir comes, this midnight prayer again takes a position there. And it tries to help us in this talking with Munkar Nakir. Then again, this Prophet says that because I get really nervous when I see the grave, I'm giving my personal view, okay? It's really deep, you know. Deep. To me, if it was three feet, I would have been easy. But it's six feet. It's very deep, you know. So Prophet says, for my fear, you know, then when you're deep in the grave, he will use deep because it's deep. This midnight prayer will stay with you in the dark, deep grave. It stays with you. And it becomes a kind of carpet beneath you in the deep grave. So it will be a carpet for your back and a noor and light in the deep dark grave. What else we want? That's what we want, right? That when the brothers come and bury us in deep grave, this midnight prayer comes. But the issue with midnight prayer is that when only pious people can do midnight prayer, if you sin, what happens? When you sin, you cannot do midnight prayer because shaitan comes to you and make you weak about getting up in the night. There are verses in Quran about midnight prayer that Allah did not even say about its reward, what reward I have given for the midnight prayer. The reward is so secret and it is so big that it is not even mentioned. Nobody knows what the reward is of midnight prayer on the judgment days, you know. But you know, like uh, Imam Khomeini said, you know, the reward of midnight prayer he described in this world, not in that world. In this world, is that from your eyes of the heart, you start seeing Allah's Jamal and His Noor. And that happens. Because you know, like somebody can do midnight prayer, say that do for 40 nights, and then, then Allah will help you. And that is the truth. Because if you do midnight prayer 40 nights, Allah put you the love for midnight prayer. That your spiritual level goes so high in 40 days, then, then you don't want to miss midnight prayer because it's so beautiful to be with Allah. Allah says when you do midnight prayer, He, he breaks about this. He slays to the angels. Look at this, my servant. He woke up at midnight and praying for me. Witness that I'm going to forgive his sins because nobody is watching me but me and he woke up from the bed. And I'll forgive him. See what else we want. That's what we want that we should be forgiven on the judgment day, right? And when we go to deep in the grave, because it's scary for me, it's very scary, you know, to go deep in the grave and be closed down. The midnight prayer stays, you know. It's the hard work, and the hard work pays off. If we do hard work, it pays off. If we do light work, it is not that much big, you know. The, this things are, everything is cause and action. If you do more, you get more. If you do less, you do get less. So we, we pray in this Ramadan that Allah give us tofiqat to do our morning salat and not miss morning salat because it's being witnessed by angels and you. And Allah give us tofiqat especially who are 40 plus to do midnight prayer because it is going to stay in our grave. Please say one salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa
Now, next verse is about our our surah, shakal, our picture, you know. You know, like, you know, shakal, you know, shakal, bata. shakal, matlab, surat, shape, form. This is in surah bani sal. Bismillah, khalan. Qul qulluhi ya'amalu ala shajilato farabbu ko alamu biman huwa ahada sabila. Say everyone is according to his character. But you are Lord best those who is best guided in the path. See we, Allah says that everybody acts on his character. But your Lord best knows who is best guided in the path. Best guided in the path. Now what is the character? You know, this is a very important verse, you know. We can take two people's example, you know. What is the Ali Madin, you know? I'm giving examples, easy, because you have to understand slowly. What is Ali Madin, right? And what is that kind of junior guy, you know, new Muslim, right? So, you know, if you crack a joke, right? So that the junior guy will laugh like loudly and Ali Madin will maybe a little bit smile, right? That's about it, right? That's one example, right? Let me give another example. Another example is that it's junior guy, you know, an Ali Madin, and somebody makes upset, you know. The junior guy will get loud and angry and shout, and Ali Madin will just keep quiet and say, Alhamdulillah, Bil Alameen, right? So, what happened? What happened? Why are they two respondent differently? What do you think? The reason is that they have different characters, characteristics, you know. So, that's what Allah is saying, that you are act according to your characters, you know. So, Allah, so the question comes, how we build our characters? Characters comes with lot of, and Allah says, and I know who is rightly guided, Allah says that everybody will, so we all have to develop our characters, the personalities, and how personality get develops. The personality get developed, which is described, is what is your own innate nature. You, you see the kids, you, you go to kindergarten, some are very hyper and angry kids, some are kind of docile kids, you see there, right? So that's the one thing, you know. So you are developing a character, being a hyper guy, angry guy. The, the big guys who are in the school, they are kind of angry and bully guys, and the skinny guys kind of nerd, you know. These are our characters, you know. These are our, right, guys, I'm talking to you guys. That's how our characters are, right? But Allah says, this is your given character, right? Now you have to build your character more about it. So how do you build your character? You build your character to be in a better environment, right? That's why we ask you to come and do like Sunday school, to develop better environment around you, Sunday school, right? Or getting some reading of Quran with the Sunday school teacher, you know? Or going to mosque and doing like Juma prayer. That's how you are changing your environment, right? So now you are towards building your character. Because you are just exposed to these American school and being with these bullies and all that. So Allah says, don't do that. Try to expose yourself to some Islamic nature and Islamic environment to build your decent character. And then, on the top of that, get some learning. Learn something. So when you learn something, like, that's why we have like Quran classes, we have like Tafsir classes for the older people to develop even better characteristics because character comes because character make you predispose I give you two examples just because if you don't have character you cannot act the way you want it would be like a knee jerk response you know knee, you know knee jerk response like if somebody makes you angry you start getting angry in a minute in a minute you know but if you have a deep characteristics which develop with the knowledge and be in an environment you know so you, we have to be around Islamic environment as much as we can, you know, coming to mosque, go, going to Sunday school and getting some extra classes and being around Shia kids, you know, that will build our character, you know. So then when the, when the stimulus comes, when the test comes, we pass. When the testing comes, we pass. Because Allah created us for testing and trial, when the testing comes, we pass. Please, Salam Salam. Allah, Huma, Salam, Muhammad, Wa, Muhammad. Now this verse is about Allah's names. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Qulidu Allah. 
حمید الرحمن ایما تدوف لہو اسماع الحسنہ سے کال اپن اللہ کال اپن the beneficial whichever you call upon he has the best names سبحان اللہ this is such a beautiful verse you know and I pick this verse for today Allah says that and he took two names here said call Allah call Rahman he said Rahman call Allah call Rahman falhul asmal usna there are his good names because what prophet was doing you know the prophet used to do dua in Makkah sometimes he'll call Allah sometimes he'll call Rahman so the police used to say he's teaching us one God but he's calling himself two gods <laughs> So, the, the verse came, you know, that you call Allah, you call Rahman, it's the same thing, and all his names, names are beautiful names, you know. Why Rahman, you know, why Rahman? Let me tell you in Quran with my research, after Allah, the name which has been so much of given importance, Rahman, especially on a judgment day, Allah will call himself Rahman and Rahman again and again. So we need to get used to this word Rahman. Because if we are not used, I am telling you a very beautiful point, sisters and brothers. This word Rahman. Because when, when we go to judgment day, we will see Allah, we will see so much word Rahman coming. Rahman, Rahman. Because in the verses of our judgment day, he uses his word name Rahman, Rahman. So we need to get used to this word Rahman. Because Rahman is the one who is kind to everybody. It's a abundant mercy from Allah called Rahman. So we need to connect to Allah with the word Rahman, you know. Because when you say Allah is Allah, you know. But Rahman is, is that his beauty of so kind to everybody. Please recite one salwat. Allahumma salim Muhammad wa alim Muhammad. But there is an issue about it, his names. Now it's a little deeper, I think for the youngest it will be hard. But for the elderly people it will be easy to understand what I am going a little deeper. Allah's names are there, right? There are 99 names, right? But his holy essence is one, right? His Zat is one, right? So all his names are nothing but his Zat. Okay? If he is Rahman, he is Allah, he is Rahim, he is Allah. All his names are only names. They are not more than that anything else. His real thing is his, his holy essence, his zat wahid. We cannot separate his names from his zat. Please pay attention, sisters. So, because if you just believe names, make names separate than Allah's zat, then you become like a polytheist. According to Imam Jafar Sadiq alayhi salam. Lauma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. So when you're calling Rahman, your mind is only Allah God. If you're calling Rahim, your mind is only Allah God. All his names, your mind should not be on names, but these are his sifat. But when you call a sifat, your heart should be towards Allah God. Not on a sifat. You call it a sifat, that's fine. But your heart should be to, to his holy essence. Otherwise you become like a polytheist. Because you separated his sifat from his holy essence. Which is not acceptable. Please serve and salwa. Now, this last verse is about Evel Bayt. Because I wanted to finish on Evel Bayt. This verse is verse number 60 in Surah Bani Israel. وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لَكَ إِنَّ رَبَّكَ أَحَاطَ بِالنَّاسِ فَمَا جَعَلْنَا رُوِيَ الَّتِي أَرَيْنَاكَ إِلَّا فِتْنَةُ لِلنَّاسِ وَالشَّجَزْدَ الْمَعُونَ فِي الْقُرَانِ وَنُغَفِّهُمْ فَمَا يَزِيدُهُمْ إِلَّا Tawiyanan Kabira. Please pay attention to this. This is the last verse, inshallah. And this is for Hillel Bayt. Please give respect to Hillel Bayt and respect to Quran and listen to this. And we said to you, surely your Lord encompasses men. 
جب اللہ نے کہا کہ ہم نے انسانوں کا احاطہ کیا ہوا ہے and we did not make the vision the dream which we showed you but a trial for men and the curse tree in the Quran as well and we cause them to fear but it only adds to their great insolence it's a long and difficult verse and please pay attention I'll inshallah make it easy uh, inshallah make it easy Allah tested Prophet Sallallahu he showed him the dream and Allah says that I did make this dream to show you but a trial for men I showed you this scary dream for the trial for the men I'll tell you what dream was about but Allah is talking about dream that I showed you dream for trial for the men and a curse tree in the, sh- in the Quran Shazid al-Malun fil Quran the curse tree in the Quran so Allah showed a dream in which Allah showed the curse tree in Quran so because it is a testing from Allah Allah said I show this scary dream and curse tree so that people should fear but Allah said they did not fear but they became more arrogant see that's what happened two things happen in Quran okay Quran either from Muttaqeen will cause fear see Quran does two things let me tell you brothers and sisters pay attention we have five more minutes to left when you read Quran two things happen if you are muttaqi, you will fear. If you are not muttaqi, you will become arrogant. So pray to Allah, we are reading Quran to become fearful right now, not arrogant. And listen to Quran. Because Quran does two things. Either it makes you fear and make muttaqi, or make you arrogant. So Allah says, they did not fear, but they became more arrogant with that dream. So what was the dream of the sister Peace Salaam Salwa? And after this dream, Prophet never smiled. The dream was there that he saw the children of Hakam were jumping on the pulpit of Prophet like monkeys. Children of Hakam. Like like Bani Umayya. They were Bani Umayya. They were jumping on the pulpit like monkeys. And after that, Prophet never smiled. Because they were the Munafiqeen. And they took Prophet's pulpit after Prophet left this world. We know that. Bani Abbas and Bani Umayya, they ruled. Bani Umayya ruled 90 years. Bani Abbas ruled 600 years. Prophet pulpit was taken out by these, these criminals. And Allah showed this dream that this is going to happen and your children will be tortured. And after this dream, Prophet never smiled. And since that time, majority of Ummah has been controlled by by the people who control them without El Bayt. They are not in the vilayat of El Bayt because of what we saw in the dream. But inshallah, time is coming now, mashallah. The time is coming for Imam to come. And we are seeing the signs of Imam to reappear everywhere now. People used to wonder how Imam maybe will come and rule the world and this and that. I have been seeing for 40 years what is happening in the Middle East. What was 40 years ago is not today. Then 40 years we see how much with the grace of Allah the followers of Hillel they have become powerful and people are seeing that that the, with the grace of Allah and the hard work of our Maraja Allah has given strength to Hillel based follower now and the day is not close to reappear and all those torturous things which were prophet saw in the dream and how how the Ummah was hijacked by the enemy of Prophet. We are going to see inshallah in our lifetime Imam coming and taking rights back. And we pray to Allah that when Imam comes we are on Imam's side. And it will come only with the training of Quran and developing the character, Shakila. We need to develop our character. As we ta- Allah talked about, we are through our characters. May Allah give us a strong character to be with Imam. And that character will build by inshallah being reading Quran and coming to mass, being with, uh, with scholars and being with them, 
not associating partying all the time here and there. Trust me, brother and sister, we party too much, we lose our character. Come here, you know. Because uh, as I said, you brothers and sister came late. Prophet said uh, again, I'll again say that that in the deep grave, in the dark grave, the night prayer comes and walks, right? We can never do night prayer if we sin, you know. Only pure people can do night prayer. So if we build character, inshallah, we'll do night prayer also. When you night prayers, Allah says, who does Quran and do night prayer, they are my novels, they are my sardar. He prayed to Allah that we become novels in this ummah, you know. All Shia should be novels of this ummah. How could not you be novels if you call us a Shia? So we pray to Allah to become novels in the uh, Muslim ummah to do Quran and do tahajjud. To build our characteristics so much strong that when Imam comes that we are not struggling with Imam. We are helping Imam. Otherwise, Imam will struggle to build our character. It's too late. We need to build character now. This time, trust me, brother, sister. All over the world, Shia are building characters. You see their faces. You go to these uh, places like Karbala. I was surprised. I went to Karbala and home. I saw everywhere young people with a shining face. I said, what is this? Shining face. They already built their characteristics, which we don't see those faces in West. So, we pray to Allah that Allah gives a shiny face, a nurani face, and give Quran in our heart, and give a strong characteristics. But Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, oh Allah, forgive our sins. Oh Allah, forgive this Ramadan, because if you don't forgive Ramadan, we'll never be forgiven. Please forgive all of us. Please forgive our our Marhumin who passed. O oh Allah, give us tawfiqat to read Quran and do Hazar Ali of al and to help our Imam. Walhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. محمد وعلى محمد صلوات اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبه نستعين وهو خير الناصرين اما بعد برادران عزیز اپ سب یہاں پہ نماز جماعت پڑھتے ہیں تو نماز جماعت ایک سیریز کا نام ہے ایک سلسلہ ہے جس طریقے سے جب آپ بلبز کو سریز میں لگاتے ہیں تو کبھی کبھی ہم ایسا کرتے ہیں کہ جانے ان جانے میں اپنی صف توڑ کے چلے جاتے ہیں یا مثلا اس کا اثر دوسروں پہ بھی ہوتا ہے لہذا کوشش یہ کریں کہ اگر آپ کے ساتھ بچے اگر بیٹھے ہیں تو دو بزرگ بڑوں کے بیچ میں دو بچوں کے بیچ میں ایک بڑا بیٹھا ہو اس کے علاوہ نماز جماعت میں یہ ہے کہ سب سے پہلے جو جماعت میں ہیں اس کو پیش نماز دیکھنا ضروری ہے بقیہ لوگ سب انہی سے کنیکٹ ہوتے ہیں تیسرا یہ کہ جب آپ نماز جماعت پڑھتے ہیں تو پہلے پیش نماز کے پیچھے جو ہے وہ نیت کریں کبھی کبھی مومنین پیش نماز سے پہلے بھی نیت کر لیتے ہیں تو نیت آپ گھر سے ہی کر کے آئیں وہ مسئلہ نہیں ہے لیکن اللہ کو اکبر آپ پیش نماز کے بعد کہیں ٹھیک ہے نا تو اب کبھی کیا ہوتا ہے کہ یہاں اللہ اکبر کیا وہ پیچھے پیچھے والا سب سے پہلے اللہ اکبر تو وہ نیت کنیکٹ نہیں ہے چونکہ لوگ تو کھڑے ہیں جماعت کنیکٹ نہیں ہوئی آپ سے یعنی لوگ تو کنیکٹ ہیں ابھی تو وہ بلب آن ہی نہیں ہوئے آپ ان سے کیسے کنیکٹ ہو رہے ہیں سمجھ رہے ہیں جو سیریز ہوتی ہے تو اس طرح سے چلتا ہے جیسے لہرے چلتی ہیں پیش نماز کے پیچھے والا پھر سائیڈ میں اللہ اکبر اللہ اکبر ان کے پیچھے والا اللہ اکبر اللہ اکبر ان کے پیچھے والا اللہ اکبر اللہ اکبر اس طرح سے آپ چلیں ہاں اتنی آپ کو اجازت ہے کہ اگر کوئی نہیں کر رہا ہے تو ایک لائن کی اجازت ہے لیکن اس کو جو پیچھے والا ہے جیسے آپ نے نیت نہیں کی تو وہ پیچھے والی صف کا جسٹ رائٹ آفٹر پیچھے آپ کے وہ نیت کر سکتا ہے یہ وہ کونے والا نیت کر لے تو وہ نہیں ہو سکتا تو آپ کو اس طرح سے چلنا ہے تو آپ خیال رکھیں اچھا نماز جماعت میں 
آپ کو الحمد اور سورہ پڑھنا نہیں پڑتا پیش نماز کو پڑھنا ہوتا ہے لہذا آپ ڈونٹ وریڈ اباؤٹ دیٹ کے میں دیر ہو جائے گی اس لیے پہلے نیت کر لو آپ پریشان نہ ہو پیش نماز نے جو نیت کر لی وہ سمجھیں آپ کنیکٹ ہیں رکو سے پہلے تک آپ کنیکٹ یعنی رکو تک آپ کو الاؤڈ ہے کہ آپ کنیکٹ ہو سکتے ہیں پانچ چیزیں ہیں جو رکنے نماز ہیں ویسے تو رکنے نماز جو ہے کہنا واجب آتے ہیں نماز گیارہ ہیں لیکن گیارہ میں سے پانچ چیزیں واجب ہیں اگر ان کو آپ انٹینشنلی اور ان انٹینشنلی اگر آپ چھوڑ دیں گے تو نماز باطل ہے آپ سیکھ لیں کنت رس کہیں کنت رس قاف سے قیام نون سے نیت تے سے تکبیر رے سے رکو سین سے سجود یہ پانچ چیز ایسی ہیں کہ اگر آپ نے بھول سے چھوڑ دی یا جان بوجھ کر چھوڑ دی انٹینشنلی اور ان انٹینشنلی آپ کی نماز باطل ہے ہاں اگر بھول سے ایک سجدہ رہ جائے مثلا دو سجدے ہوتے ہیں اور آپ نے ایک تو کیا ایک بھول گئے ٹھیک ہے تو آپ کی نماز صحیح ہے چونکہ دو سجدے مل کے ایک رکن ہوتا ہے آپ نے رکن کو ٹچ کر لیا ہے لیکن یہ نہیں کہ مولی صاحب نے اجازت دے دیئے تو ایک ہی سجدہ کیا جائے ایسا نہیں سجدہ جو ہے بہت امپورٹنٹ پارٹ ہے تو پانچ چیزوں کا ضرور خیال رکھیں نماز جماعت میں آپ کہہ دیں یا اللہ سمجھیں آپ انتظار نہ کریں کیونکہ اگر آپ جماعت میں شریک ہونا چاہتے ہیں تو آپ کو سجدے تک اللہ نہیں ہے آپ کو صرف رکو تک اللہ ہے جماعت میں شریک ہونا لہذا آپ تھوڑی سی تیز آواز میں کہہ دیں ٹھیک جس طرح سے آپ کلاس کے دوران بولتے ہیں اتنی آواز بھی چلے گی سمجھ رہے نا تو یا اللہ کہہ دیں تاکہ پیش نماز آپ کو ویٹ کریں اگر آپ نے یا اللہ کہہ دیا اور پیش نماز نے ویٹ نہیں کیا تو روز قیامت اس سے پوچھا جائے گا کہ ایک نورانی سفر میں شریک ہونا چاہتا آپ نے لیکن وہ بھی بیچارے کہیں ہیں مولی صاحب انہوں نے ویس پر کہا تھا میں نے انہوں نے کہا تھا کہ یا اللہ تو اتنا تو ہو کم سے کم نفیس حیدر کو سنائی دے جائے یا پیش نماز کو سنائی دے جائے سمجھ ایک منٹ رہ گیا کوئی بھی ایک سوال دیکھیں اس نماز کو واجب کفائی رکھا ہے اگر اس کی نماز کوئی بھی ایک مومن پڑھ دیتا ہے تو آپ پیسے وہ نماز ساکت ہے جو ساکت ہے تو اس کا غائب آنا اور حاضر آنا جو جنازے حاضر ہیں چونکہ نیت نماز جنازے کی یہی ہے کہ میں جنازہ حاضر کی نماز میت پڑھتا ہوں قربت نلللہ سمجھ رہے نا تو جب حاضر کی بات ہے تو نماز جنازہ حاضر میں ہوگی غائب میں نہیں ہو سکتی جی ہاں نہیں صحیح نہیں ہے الحمد اور سورے کو آپ ریپیٹ نہ کریں اگر آپ ریپیٹ کرتے ہیں اٹمین صاحب جماعت میں نہیں ہے خاموش رہنا ہے خاموش رہنا اگر آپ کو لگے کہ خاموش رہوں گا تو شیطان مجھے ایک ٹائم دے گا کہ آؤ تھوڑی دیر کھیل لیں سمجھے نا ٹائم دیتا ہے نا تو آؤ مولی صاحب تو کام پہ لگے ہوئے ہیں آپ تھوڑا میرے سے کھیل لیں تو اگر آپ کو ایسا خدشہ ہو تو خاموشی سے کوئی بھی ذکر خدا اور سب سے بڑی ذکر ہے لا الہ الا اللہ اس میں آپ کو ہوڈ بھی نہیں ہلانے پڑتے لا الہ الا اللہ ٹھیک ہے نا تو لا الہ الا اللہ سید الازکار ہے تمام ذکروں کا سردار ہے آپ اتنا کر سکتے ہیں وہ بھی استحباب میں ہیں لیکن آپ کوشش کریں کہ توجہ کے ساتھ پیش نماز کو پیچھے کھڑے ہوں پہلی اور جی ہاں صرف الحمد اور سورہ بقیہ سب چیزیں آپ کو پڑھنی ہیں سمجھیں جی 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 خود صرف الحمد اور سورہ پہلی اور دوسری رکعت میں آپ کو پڑھنا ہے بقیہ سب نہیں آپ کو نہیں پڑھنا ہے بقیہ سب آپ کو پڑھنا ہے جی زہر اور اثر میں پہلی اور دوسری رکعت خاموشی سے ہوتی ہے تو آپ بھی ہو اس خاموشی سے اگر اس خاموشی میں آپ کو لگے کہ میں بہک رہا ہوں تو ذکر خدا خاموشی سے کریں اتنا نہیں کہ پڑوسی کو بھی سنائی دے لا الہ الا اللہ سمجھ رہنا یہ ذکر کر سکتے ہیں بقیہ جو ہے الحمد اور سورے میں آپ کو کچھ نہیں 
پڑھنا ہے اس دوران چونکہ نماز جماعت کے معنی یہ ہے سمجھ رہے اور کوئی سوال انشاءاللہ میں تھوڑا سا اور کل سے ٹائم جلدی لے لوں کل سنڈے سکول کے بچوں کا جو ہے آوارڈ سیریمنی ہے چھوٹے بچے ہیں ان کا دل رکھنے کے لیے آپ ضرور آئیں والدین تو مجبور ہیں وہ تو ضرور آئیں گے لیکن آپ بھی ان کے چچا لگتے ہیں رشتہ دار لگتے ہیں آپ بھی ضرور تشریف لائیں انشاءاللہ تو سیون تھرٹی کا میں نے ٹائم دیا انشاءاللہ آپ حاضر ہو جائیں تو ہو جائیں کوئی سا بھی ذکر کہہ سکتے ہیں آپ یعنی اللہ اکبر بھی کہہ سکتے ہیں سبحان اللہ بھی کہہ سکتے ہیں یا حیو یا قیوم بھی کہہ سکتے ہیں لیکن رسول اللہ ہاں صرف رکو میں اور سجدے میں یہ شرط ہے کہ رسول اللہ ذکر کیا کرتے تھے سبحان ربی العظیم و بے حمد اور سبحان ربی العلا و بے حمد آپ رسول کی پیروی کرتے ہوئے یہ ذکر کہیں یا اس ذکر کی لینت کا کوئی بھی ذکر کہیں اس سے کم لینت نہیں 